Hey everyone, welcome back to Couch Conversations with Sasha Love. I'm your host, Sasha Love. And on today's episode, we are going to continue our series, Living a Lobe or Living a Life on a Budget. And in the last episode, I had hoped to combine both like income and expenses and short-term and long-term goals. But then as I was talking about income and expenses, um, I realized I didn't have enough time to really talk about um, setting short-term and long-term goals. So in this episode, we're going to dive into that a little bit. What I'm not going to do is like specify what specific goals you need to make for yourself. I feel like you are definitely capable and able and you are wise and smart and you have gifts and talents and you are capable of analyzing your situation of where it is right now and knowing what decisions and steps you need to make in the future to be in a better place. So the goal of today is not to give you specific things to look forward to or to to plan towards, but more so to kind of give you broad strokes of ideas of what things are considered short term and what things can be considered long-term for those of us who are living life on a budget. So hopefully that makes sense. So short-term goals in pure definition for the sake of this video, and this is just an arbitrary definition I'm just making up for this video just so we can understand what we're talking about in terms of time difference. But short-term goals are goals from today up until like six months from now. So what are things are you going to do day to day to help benefit you financially from starting today within the next couple weeks, within the next couple months, up until six months. Long-term goals are plans and ideas and and, um, goals that you set for anything six months or longer. So six months up until three, five years, up until retirement, 30 years, 50 years, regardless, any, any, um, any length of time beyond six months. So that sets the time apart. So with that in mind, then we kind of have to figure out, okay, what kinds of goals are realistic in the short term and what kinds of goals are realistic in the long term? So some good short term goals are balancing your income and your expenses. So making sure that you get really, really good at getting a feel for what it means to know how much is coming in, how much is going out, and being comfortable with what that difference looks like. So a short-term goal, a short-term goal could be like, you know what, my income and my expenses are now equal. Over the next six months, so from today to the next six months, I want to find ways to increase that gap where I am making more than my expenses. Whether that means I'm cutting down on things I don't need to spend on, or I'm finding ways to increase income. Definitely doable within the short term. Um, other short-term goals include um, thinking about what you want your financial future to look like. So this doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna set plans now, but it means that you're actively practicing the skill of, okay, I'm living for the moment, I'm living for now, I'm living for the season that I'm in right now, but I also wanna brainstorm how I want my life to look like moving forward. So if I'm looking to get married soon or have kids someday, or maybe I just wanna enjoy my life and I wanna be able to own multiple homes or invest in properties or whatever the case may be, let me start brainstorming what a financially healthy and thriving life for me looks like within the next six years to, or six months to X amount of years. Um, some specific things that you can think about is like what age you want to retire. Uh, what are some long-term plans and investments that you want to make um, and things like that. So, so yeah. And that kind of dives us right into long-term goals. Um, I feel like I should come up with some more examples of short-term, but I feel like income expenses is like a really good starting point. Um, oh, and savings, savings, absolutely. So it's it's great to have um, short-term goals for savings. So whether that is, I wanna save 500 bucks by the end of this six months, or by the end of this quarter, or I wanna save 100 bucks by the end of this month or this quarter, definitely doable. If I wanna start uh, other ideas to include, like how much do I wanna start investing within the next six months? Do I wanna start um, mobilizing some free income for investing? Um, do I want to learn more about investing? What that means, how that could benefit me? Um, what are the things I can gain from that? Um, 
So doing research um, and figuring out how or different ways or how much money you have available to invest are other short-term goals to make too. So to kind of summarize, ideas for short-term goals, and these are just some ideas. You can probably come up with more on your own, but ideas for short-term goals include managing your income and outcome and learning what it really means to stick to a budget, researching what you want your financial future to look like, and um, figuring out how to save and mobilize more income for other things you want to do, such as investing, maybe it's trips, maybe you want to buy a specific gift, maybe you want to buy yourself a specific gift. Um, those are things you can work on and put into practice in the short term. The benefit of having short term goals is that when you reach your markers, when you reach your goals, it feels really good and it's very affirming. And one of the best things to help us in our journey of finances, because we're making a lot of sacrifices, right? We're making a lot of changes. So one of the things that can encourage us in our journey is realizing like, man, look what I was able to do in the short term. I was able to cut down my expenses. I was able to make some more income. I was able to create more of an even balance between my income and expenses. I was able to actually create a little bit of a gap. And now I have some free extra money that I can use for saving, investing, or planning towards a trip I want to have for my 30th birthday or my 50th birthday or my 75th birthday. So, um, so yeah, so those are some short-term goals. It's motivating, it encourages you, and also keeps you active. Because sometimes when we set goals too far in the future, we get lazy, we get distracted, and um, without checkpoints along the way, we can easily fall off track, okay? So those are some ideas for short-term. Take some time to think about what are some short-term realistic financial goals that you want to set, and then start working from there. Long-term goals, um, I kind of alluded to earlier. Um, I love thinking about long-term goals because that's me. I'm a dreamer. I like to think, you know, big dreams in the future, how to get there. So my thing, side note, my thing is I need to work more on short-term goals because I tend to like skip over the short-term and I just want to get to the long-term, you know, successes. But um, that's my area of growth. I need to work on doing that. But long-term, that that is the area that I love the most, um, that I love researching the most. Uh, but those are things like long-term um, financial plans that you have for yourself. So whether that's buying a home, whether that is saving up for retirement, whether that's retiring at a non-traditional age. So typical age of retirement is 65, depending on the career that you have. But for most of us, it's 65. But if you're planning on retiring at a non-traditional age, which is anything less than 65, then that's going to require a long-term financial plan. So is that something that you want? And if that's something that you want, if that's something that's part of your financial future, then it's going to be really important for you to create long-term goals that get you to that goal of retiring at 50 or 45 or 40 or 30 or 25, you know, if you started really early. Um, if you're one of those who retired at 25, definitely hit me up because I really want to know more. Um, that's just, you know, and we all want to know more. So definitely, you know, just, you know, leave some gems there. You know, we're looking for mentors, you know, we don't know it all. But um, <laughs> anyways, I digress. But yeah, so retirement, like what does retirement look like for you? When do you want to retire? Um, what age do you want to retire? And what are the steps that you need to take to get there long term? Um, so that's an example of one. Do you want to own a home? Is that something that you want to do? Do you want to have a starter home or do you want to just start out right out the gate and be able to build your dream home? Um, do you want to own multiple homes? Do you want to own an apartment complex? Do you want to own industrial centers and buildings and um, commercial businesses? What It could be anything you want. You know, These are just ideas I'm throwing out there, but those are usually bigger investments that often take time and that take a lot of planning for. So those are considered more long-term goals. Um, what, is, what is the kind of a life you want to live moving forward? Right now, you may be living life on a budget. Um, do you want that budget to look different? You know, Do you want to expand that budget? Do you want to have more freedom? Do you want to be able to walk into a store and be like, you know what, I'm okay buying whatever it is I need because I don't have to be on my P's and Q's about every single penny that I spend. You know, if that's a reality for you, then how can you get there? How can you build to that? Investments. 
what what are investments? How do I invest in it? And what are some good investments to make? And what are some long term projections of what how how much I can make on investments? And what are short term projections? So these are examples of some long term goals that you can kind of think about and work towards and learn the steps of working towards. So now you're thinking, okay, you gave me some ideas of short term and long term, but how do I know how to build towards those goals? Well, um, do some research, you do the work. Um, <laughs> that may not be the sexiest answer, but sometimes it just takes like sitting down and starting with the basics, income um, and expenses, and then saving. And then as you're doing these things, keep learning, keep studying, keep researching. You know, I, I love looking up things about investing. I love looking at things related to home, home owning. I love looking at things like mortgages and how to manage that purchasing cars, um, how to retire earlier, how to, you know, all these different things. And um, as I learn these things, I'm building my skills and learning, okay, how to adjust my plan, how to get there. You see what I'm saying? Um, so um, things like not putting all your money in a traditional bank savings account because the rate of return is fairly low on your money. But in other places like credit unions and things like that, you may get more for your money. So little things like that you pick up and learn along the way. So in setting your goals, I would encourage you to start somewhere. And I gave you some pointers in the last episode about income and expenses. So that's a good place to start usually for most of us. And as you're starting, keep researching and learning because I could sit here and give you like specific examples, but at the end of the day, each of us are different. Each of us have different goals and each of us have different means to work with. Some of us may only be working with, you know, 5,000 a month and some of us are working with $50,000 a month. You know what I'm saying? But we can all benefit from um, being mindful of how we spend money and being able to create a life that is in line with financial health as opposed to financial burden and stress. So start somewhere, continue doing research, And when you're setting goals, make sure they are SMART. So S-M-A-R-T. This is an acronym that uh, we often use in the medical world, but also uh, it can be applied to any area of our lives. And it comes to when we set goals. So goals that are S, specific, M, measurable. So um, yeah, measurable. You can actually measure your progress. A, actionable. So it's actually something that's practical and doable. Um, are realistic and T time sensitive. Okay. So for example, an example of a smart goal is um, I have to be specific. I want to increase my income by 5% in the next three months. Okay. That's specific. A measurable increasing income. Okay. My income, let's say is now $5,000 a month and um, 5% Oh my goodness, my math right now. Let's say I want to do it by increments of $50 a month, right? Okay, so I'm going to check my progress every month to see if I'm bringing an extra $50 home every month. Okay, measurable. So a specific, measurable, actionable. Bringing home 50 bucks a month is doable. I can maybe do a couple things on the side, maybe get a couple side gigs, maybe pick up a second job like DoorDash or Uber Eats and kind of get a couple of, get some cash coming in um, and add it to my income. So actionable, it's doable, it's realistic. Something that's not realistic is I'm going to triple my income within three months. Well, for some people that may be possible, but for a lot of us, not necessarily realistic. And the reason why it's important to make sure that the goal is something that you can actually do is that you don't end up in a situation where because you don't get there or because it was so unrealistic and you don't get there, you get discouraged and you stop and you don't make progress and you don't move forward. So you want to make sure it's something that's actually doable. And then of course, realistic. So um, kind of goes with doable, but like it has to be something realistic. If you're only bringing home maybe 2000 or 3000 a month, it may not be realistic to expect that your income to multiply by 10. But it is realistic to maybe spare a little bit of time to try to increase your income by 50 bucks or maybe even 20 bucks or 30 bucks. Okay, so we set a goal that was specific. I want to increase my income by 5%. Uh, I want to measure that by looking at 
increases in my income about $50 a month by doing side jobs um, like Uber Eats or DoorDash. Um, it's something that's realistic for me right now. Um, I can squeeze in the hours. The hours are flexible with my current nine to five job and my current responsibilities. And that's something that I can do. Um, and then um, realistic. So I'm in a place right now where this is what I'm making. Um, and I think it's reasonable for me to expect my income to increase in this way, in this amount. And then um, last but not least, time sensitive. So I said time sensitive three months. You can set it for a month, um, you know, a week, six months, whatever the case may be. But just make sure you set a time on it. Because sometimes when we don't set a time on our goals, again, we get distracted. We lose track. We fall off track and things like that. And we don't get to where we want to be. So that is my little segment about short-term financial goals. We gave some examples about short-term um, financial goals. We get some examples of long-term financial goals. I gave you a few tips about how to start in your journey of finances and to improve your finances by starting with the budget, looking at your income and, and expenses, and learning how to navigate that. And as you're starting out, to continue doing research, to continue learning more. And last but not least, make sure any goals that you set, whether it's short term, really short term, long term or really, really long term, um, make sure it's a smart goal. So specific, measurable, actionable or doable, realistic and time sensitive. OK, hopefully that's helpful. Leave your comments and thoughts below and I look forward to connecting with you all very soon. Take care. Bye. Pop your melanin, girlfriend. Pop your melanin. Pop your melanin.